Today's scripture text comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 to 9. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me in delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinances of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all of your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this fast a day acceptable to God? Is not this the fast that I chose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to do, undo the throngs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own ken, then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of God shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and God will answer. You shall cry for help, and God will say, Here I am. Amen. You may be seated. Amazing. Isaiah gives us some insight. And the insight is that God cares less about how we observe religious rules and regulations than how we live our ordinary lives. The people in this scripture showed outward evidence of wanting to do God's will. And you could read about that in verse 2, probably because they consulted the priests and the prophets. They were prepared to show their earnestness by enduring this minor inconvenience of a fast. What did uh, a little abstinence matter if they could retain their basic life of disobedience and rebellion against the moral demands of their God? What did it matter? See, the people, they questioned. They questioned the fasting and was a good thing. Was, was it a good thing for them to do? You heard the questions. The people questioned, would it make their voice be heard on high? They questioned the fact, is such a fast that I choose like a day that I just humble myself before God? They question. Maybe we question too. Now, I know that humility in front of God is a good start, but not that in and of itself is pleasing to God. Amen. If it's done with a hard heart. Now, they had these outward signs, but inside they were stingy. They could care less about the bonds of injustice. They would fast, but then they would work their workers even harder to make up for what they perceived to be a loss through their time of lying in sackcloth and ashes, which that's an outward symbol of being in a fast. If you come here on Ash Wednesday, you'll get a symbol of the cross with some ashes on it. Um, and it's a symbol of that fasting time. This sign of 
empty externalism in this scripture and in the scriptures before when Isaiah in chapter 1 talks about and tells the people in chapter 1 um, to stop bringing meaningless offerings. In other words, he's talking to their heart. Get your heart right. Quit, stop doing the, the things just because you think you have to. Amen? Amen. And he, this comes on the heels of their uh, indictment of their rebellion. They were a rebellious people. They rebelled against God. Now through Isaiah, God exposes the people's hypocrisy. Ouch. <laughs> and that their fasting was not spiritually motivated. I believe it was the people's sin that kept them from being fulfilled spiritually. And I believe it is ours too that keeps us from experiencing God to the fullest. Because we put other things in front of God. Now, many of us, if we were really honest with ourselves, and if we were honest really with God, have this deep disappointment with God. Amen? God may not have come through as we would have liked God to come through. God has not answered our prayers the way we wanted them to be answered, by golly. Or you may feel you get a little bit nervous when you open the, the Word of God and you don't understand all of it, all of that, the words that are there. And you, you think that it's a, it's a roadblock to understanding God spiritually. This, this sense that you have that God is not meeting you, it may be a real sense. But I want to tell you, God does want to meet you. And God will meet you if your heart is open and you are ready to receive from God. But God doesn't use a big stick and beat you up over it and make you come and realize that. No, that's not how God operates. Amen? Amen. God will meet you right where you're at. But the fact is, we can use any number of excuses not to be the righteous people of God. What excuse? Now, I'm proud of y'all if you're here because this is Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> and I'm proud of y'all that you're here. And we had a great uh, group at, at the earlier service, too. But, you know, sometimes that's an excuse. We can use an excuse of a football game to keep us from coming to worship God. Mm -hmm. I've heard it. I've seen it. Back in the day, I probably did it. <laughs> it's not my judgment. <laughs> but I didn't know better back then. I know better today. Thank God that God isn't finished with us just yet. <laughs> now Isaiah, the words here remind me of righteousness. Of righteousness. Now that's a big word and it's like, ooh, it kind of makes you feel kind of, you know, I don't know. Righteousness. Righteousness is not found in necessarily being good because there's a lot of good people out, out in the world that are not righteous. Now righteousness is seen when the oppressed go free, when the bread is shared, and when all have a place, when those in need have clothing, have been covered, and they're welcomed at the table. Yeah. You know, can you imagine? Okay, homeless person, you're coming home with me today. Can you imagine? That's what it's saying. It's hard. I didn't say it was easy. <laughs> it's hard. Now, it is, it is more important to live in this way, in, the need, in serving the needs of others, than to, than to ignore other people's needs and just keep going through the motions. How many times do we see a homeless person on the, back, on the, on the road and we... We forget that we have backpacks to give out and we pretend that they're not there. Mm. I've done it. If you want to take a, a backpack, we have backpacks for free for you to take and put in your car 
So when you, home, when you see a homeless person or someone in need, you don't have to pretend and look the other way. You can give them a backpack. You have a, a tool to give them. You have something to give them. Yeah. How awesome that is. How awesome that is. Now, when we live out this kind of compassion, we truly encounter God. And we understand that joy comes from this kind of discipleship. Amen. Clearly, some believe that to be faithful meant to follow some rules and observing the fast and to do all the religious regulations that were expected of them. Now, they followed these without regard to the reality of the world around them. And that can even hold true today. If we were to look around, we know that there, there's a reality in our world that needs some help. Many places have these rules and regulations that must be followed. And they, they must be followed above the move of God and above the needs of people. I tell you, saints, I believe. I don't want us to, to be one of those kind of places. Right. Right. I don't. We must be about following the move of God yes. and look around and see where we can make a difference. And we can and we do make a difference. Many times, people go through the motions of trying to look and seem important. I want to share with you this illustration this morning. There's this lawyer. Brand new. Got a, a new office building. And he's really excited. And so he's getting, he's putting things on his desk and he looks out and he sees this young man coming, getting ready to come in the door. So he thinks to himself, ah, I better do something to look busy. <laughs> so he picks up the telephone and the man walks in and he's on the phone. He says, look Harry, about that incorporation deal. I think I better run down to the factory and handle it personally. Yeah? No? I don't think three million will swing it. Well, we better have someone from corporate meet us over there. Okay. I'll call you back later. Click. He looks up at the visitor and he says, Good morning. How may I help you? And the prospective client says, you can't help me at all. I'm just here to hook up your phone. <laughs> my, oh my. It's easy to confuse the demands of life with the expectations of God. Sometimes, of course, they can be the same. But sometimes they are not. And living faithfully doesn't necessarily mean simply following the rules and the regulations that keep you personally in the zone. It means daring to live. Daring to live with the kind of radical compassion that will put everything, even our faith, even tradition, itself on the line if necessary. It means that we must be on purpose <coughs> with how we approach this fasting thing in our own life. So you didn't think I remembered, did you? <laughs> <laughs> this fasting thing in our own life. Let me ask you this morning, what would happen? What would happen if you took a break, break and on purpose fast from negative comments. Mm -hmm. What would happen if you took a break and on purpose fast from indecisive thoughts and cutting remarks? What would happen if you fasted on 
purpose and eliminated unhealthy things from your diet. <clears throat> your spirit. Your life. What would happen? What could happen if you on purpose fasted from the conversation during worship and worshiped without the thought of who might be watching? What could happen if you came fully before God, seeking that transformation, and asked God for the willingness then to do the necessary work to fulfill it? Hallelujah. See, Isaiah asks these same kinds of questions. Is such this fast that I choose? Or am, am I supposed to humble myself into this practice of fasting? Give up a meal? Give up something that would help others? Yes. We have bigger issues that could be addressed if we were not so selfish. If we could focus on something outside of ourselves. Sometimes we have the me mentality. It's all about me. It's all about me. We forget that it is in the serving that we are served. If you have a need this morning, if you are struggling with something, I want to tell you if you could just put yourself out there a little bit and help someone else. Be available to serve someone else. It is in the serving that you are served. The, the people in Isaiah couldn't see beyond their own issues. They couldn't. They were worried about everything else. And I pray that we will not be like that. That we would be willing to become disciples and grow up and grow spiritually beyond our own self-interest. That we would be able to declare the power and the grace of God because we lived it day in and day out. Day in and day out. Day in and day out. You see, being spiritually fit is not, doesn't just happen on Sundays. That we can, I believe that we can be a voice for the injustices that happen. That we can stand in the gap for the bondages of people who are hurting and share the overcoming power of God's grace. I want to encourage you this morning to allow your life to be filled with this purpose. And remind you that each one of you are here for a purpose. It just didn't happen. You just didn't walk in here on your own. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. Fasting on purpose is something that you do because you understand on some level it has some benefits. But the benefit may be more than you could ever imagine when you couple it with acts of compassion and justice. I am reminded in the verses just following the scripture text for today that, that God will guide us continually. That God will satisfy our needs in the parched places and will make our bones strong. Now when we on purpose make the decision to serve God, we find out real quick that we must lean on God, especially in those dry places in our lives. When we do what we know to do, we have to let go and let the rest be in the hands of God. It may feel like we're being parched, amen? It may feel like we're being pulled or we have this battle in front of us, but I want to remind the saints that the word tells us the battle is not ours, but it is God's. 
So if you're struggling and you're battling and you're working and, you know, you've done all you can to do, remember the battle is not yours, but it is God's. Amen. And you're telling God, hurry up, God. God is looking for us to do some kind of sharing with our lives. I'll tell you what that God is not looking for us to do, and that is to follow some kind of ritual and some kind of fasting thing that we, we, have, we think we have to do, but, we, but to fast on purpose with our hearts set on what is right and just. When we do that, I believe our lights will shine. When we do that, we will see that the Spirit of God is still alive. It's active. I still wonder, I ponder what blocks us from doing that. In Isaiah, we see the truth that actions of love, justice, and mercy, freely shared, pull the chain that turns on the light. Actions alone are not enough. But actions that live out our worship are life-giving. Right. Mm -hmm. James 2.17 says, Faith without works is dead. Actions alone are not enough. If struggles seem to loom, you might try giving yourself away. By allowing God to penetrate your heart in such a way that transformation happens. Instead of just going through the motions. I don't know about you, but many times in my life I felt like I've been just going through the motions. And sometimes we need something to shake us up. Amen? Amen. Amen. God knows our hearts. And we can start there by making the necessary changes, but then we need to digest it. We need to allow it to transform our actions. We can take a day of on-purpose fasting to get us a jump start, and that's an awesome thing. Fasting will enable us to get clarity when we may have lost our focus. Even if you commit to giving up dinner one night a week just to focus on God, how your life will be transformed, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Fasting will connect us closer to God so that we can use our salt, as the kids were learning, to flavor the lives of others, that we can make the positive changes. Fasting on purpose will lay a foundation for your spiritual life, but fasting on purpose is not enough. It's a starting place. And believe it or not, fasting will make you full. Fasting will make you full. Church, I want to share with you a personal prayer and a prayer for our church this morning that God laid upon my heart. And this is it. Oh Lord, help me to truly share my life with others so that your light will break forth like the dawn and my healings shall spring up quickly. You the Vindicator shall go before me in my life, in my ministry. Your glory shall be my rear guard and protect me from the enemy's attack. And I shall cry for help, and you will say, here I am. I ask that God will remove the yokes of bondages from our congregation and fill us with the spiritual food that we need to flavor the world around us. That God will guide us continually and satisfy our need in the parched places and make our bones strong. And that we will be like a watered, well-watered garden, like a spring of living water. I believe from the ruined places of our lives that God will and can rebuild. That God will take our history and use it for good. That God will use our church to change lives. That our lives will be used and will be rebuilt. And we will rise up the foundations of a next generation. 
We shall be called the repairer of lives and the restorer of a biblical community here in Stockton, California. I pray, God, that the promise of return is on its way, more than we could ever think or ask. And it's more than we ever are asked to commit. I pray for your strength for our church as we follow your ways. May God add a blessing to these words. Amen.